And I remember that to this day, this would be like 35 years later, the feeling. I'm like, okay, you know, Mr. So and so, sure, you may not care enough to know anything about me, but can you at least remember my name? Introducing Mr. Varshney. He's the director of Varshney Capital Corp and a longtime investor and entrepreneur who values human relationships. Table stake. When an officer comes in, they're going to be hardworking, you know, smart, driven, and all those kind of things, right? But kind of the X factors we look for are vision and passion. And my strength is, you know, building relationships quickly and deeply and maintaining them on a long term basis. And, uh, you know, some of the key steps I found in building great relationships were one. Um, the other thing, too, is. Before we let the stories of the past shape your future, it would mean the world to me if you could follow us or subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us. Enjoy the conversation. So, without any further ado, Brandon, let the stories of the past shape your future on the Quoting, Quoting Life podcast. podcast. Nice to meet you. When I was going through my research of you, something I came across is that you were quite fascinated with people's stories. And that really sparked curiosity in me and a lot of joy as well, because this podcast, the original idea came from being able and letting people tell their stories. And now I have the privilege of now asking you, your story as a whole, where would it start? If you were to write an autobiography, what would those first initial chapters be that we need to know to understand the person that you are today? Yeah. So, you know, life is serendipitous. You know, you don't necessarily plan things and hop in. You know, you know, some doors open, some close, you go through some, et cetera. But, um, you know, my only story started when our family immigrated here from India. Uh, my father came as a student um, to UBC because they gave him a $1,000 scholarship. And we pretty much lived on the west side of Vancouver most of my life. And so... If that's not hitting the jackpot, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, so that was a, a critical sort of initial moment. And then um, the second one would be going to UBC and, and specifically getting to solder. Um, I actually started in sciences um, and I flunked physics and it was painful. <laughs> I never failed anything in my life and um, it was hard. I wasn't enjoying it and you start questioning, you know, what am I doing? <laughs> and so uh, I thought, let me try daughter uh, just be calm back then and so that was another sort of pivotal moment to kind of get in and back then um my gpa to get in was 68 percent which is crazy i think like uh, i don't know how you know students get in now with like 98 um uh, anyway so, so that was a, an important part, uh, milestone and then within solder you have to specialize and so i did accounting and um quite frankly my hr marks like obir i would call were my best marks, like my, my sort of my people skills were already, I guess, kind of developing. And um, I carried on and did my CPA. Um, then I quit uh, and to basically become an entrepreneur um, after my five years at KPMG. And uh, I became an entrepreneur for about 14 years, building a handful of startups uh, with my family, my father, and my brother, and um, had some really good success in a variety of sectors. And, you know, as you said earlier, Adam, like if I wind back the clock, like I, I can't, even, you know, never predicted the different things we've done and people met. Like we started a, a multi-billion-dollar diamond mine. We did a casino company. Uh, just so many incredible sort of opportunities that came our way. Um, and then we shifted to a family office. So we don't run companies. We just want to work with entrepreneurs and back them with capital advice, guidance, contacts. Um, and I'm, I know a key part, as you said, is my sort of uh, love of hearing people's stories. Um, and it actually started when I started at UBC because, you know, you, you get to UBC, you know, like first year, you know, physics class, there was probably 300 people in that class. And your head's kind of hurting with all the names and people and, you know, where you're from and what you're studying. And um, I actually started a three ring binder, literally, because you had binders back then, where I would say I put your name at the top. And every time I learned something about you, I would write it down. <laughs> and um, I basically was kind of building a sort of a CRM paper based back then, um, because, you know, the thing was you you'd meet someone, you'd learn something about them, and then, you know, you'd go away and maybe see them a month later or, you know, and then you kind of forget what you learned, right? So I just found hmm. that this is a great sort of way to kind of always continue to learn about the person. And um, 
And then it kind of carried on, and I started developing this sort of spreadsheet-based database uh, when I started working. And then uh, a really important book that I read was uh, by an author named Harvey McKay. And he lives in Minnesota. He's an envelope millionaire. And he had a book called Swim with a Shark. So I think it's still around, and he's written other books. I actually got a chance to meet Harvey and have him you know, do a sort of a, a speech at my entrepreneur organization. But basically, in his book, he talked about uh, the Mackay 66. So 66 questions that he wanted all his staff to get to know about customers and prospects, right? And so, you know, I started thinking, well, this guy who's a millionaire basically said you should kind of build a database of information around people. And uh, intuitively, this kind of makes sense to me. But I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> now it really makes sense to me because he's telling me this really works, right? And um, so I found that uh, I've just kind of kept that going all these years. Like my, my database is really my biggest asset and my strength is, you know, building relationships quickly and deeply and maintaining my long-term basis. Um, and so, uh, you know, there's an expression that you'll hear that your network becomes your net worth, right? Yeah, so absolutely. It, it, it truly is about, you know, connections and, and um, you know you kind of hear that and networking but um, uh, you know, it's super important I mean a lot of information that I, sh I shared out you and happy to dive deep a little bit more into some of that and something something that really struck me like going back to the university years I know no one in my circle that keeps a binder of people <laughs> and writes their names I mean uh, for sure me and Brandon when you know we're interviewing someone then for sure we'll you know write out a document with with information and what I'm wondering is how did that start is did your parents play any influence in the importance of having relationships with people? Yeah, um, no, I wouldn't really say my parents influenced me on, on, on that side of things. It just seemed like intuitive and common sense to me, right? Because I mean, our brains are amazing. Like they 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 can you know re uh, uh, retain so much information, but it's fallible. You know, when you need something the most, <laughs> you can't remember, right? Um, and so just even my own a family's birthday like i write all that down right and um you know when you you start hearing to like let's say our prime minister is going to india right on a you know a trade mission or something he's literally getting a dossier about every person he's going to meet and right and mm -hmm. so it's basically prepping yourself about some personal information about you know all the different various people right so if heads of state are using that you know like you know ordinary people should have some kind of system um there's a phrase that uh um I use and kind of taught our two kids or daughters things as well, but it's be interested and be interesting. Okay. And so mm. what that means is um, interesting is you don't need to be an expert in anything, you know, just good to know a little bit about a lot of things so you can have a conversation. Right. And so a little bit about sports or politics or whatever the hell it is. Right. Um, and be interested is a lot of what we're just talking about is, you know, be interested in people and, and their stories. Right. And um, people really appreciate that sort of uh, sincere, genuine interest in their stories and the gift of time. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the key steps I found in building great relations were like one, just how you greet people. Right. So, um, you know, I've got several friends and, you know, when I see them, the very first thing they say is like hi in a high energy voice. Right. It just kind of lifts you up versus, you know, people who are just like, you know, like down or not even smiling, right? And so when you greet someone with an you know high energy, it actually lifts the person up and makes them feel good, right? Like people won't remember what you said necessarily, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And um, mm. I don't know if you guys have dogs, but you know we've got a labradoodle, and every day without fail he, he greets me, right, with this excitement, mm. the tail wagging. And so basically, I actually say like try and greet people like you're a, a puppy, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it makes people feel good. Um, the other thing too is, you know, the world is like a mirror, you know, what you reflect out is what you get back. So even just a simple thing of like a smile, right? Like you mm. get a smile, right? even from a stranger, um, you know, the importance of people's names, right? So the line I use is remember people's names and use them often, right? Right, Adam and Brandon. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> and on the interested thing too, another sort of tip is, you know, you've got two ears and one mouth. So meaning you want to listen twice as much as you speak, right? And, and listen with the intent to remember, right? And um, 
as I said, like I work on my database every day and literally whether it's someone I've known for a long time or especially somebody new, I take the time and it takes work, right? To, so you have to have a discipline to do this, but to then write it down. And we didn't have smartphones back then, obviously, right? Yeah. So now there's no excuse to not be able to just like, you know, dump a bunch of, st- a bunch of stuff into the contacts, you know, note part, right? To just, you know, and then when you see someone a year later or whenever it is, right? And you're able to, you know, say something about their family and the names, the kids, the dogs, or whatever. And even simple things like this is a Harvard K type stuff, like, you know, what kind of, you know, food or wine or do you have allergies? Like all those things are like, you know, they start adding up and you get this really, you know, important dossier information on, on everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's so interesting because even with my dad just this morning, we were talking about how I met this guy and he was saying how it's important to be intentional of everything you do. Just when you go up and order food, say, hi, how are you? But genuinely mean it. Yeah. And I started doing that more and more. And the response I've been getting from the cashier, it's, it's so interesting because they're like surprised all of a sudden, right? Yeah. And then you listen to other people and people don't even say, hi, how are you anymore? Like something so simple. They just go straight to ordering food. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. And, and um, um, you know, I mean, here's the story. And, and so when I was uh, at KPMG and I was a little peon student starting, <laughs> Uh, I remember, like, I get off the elevator and I'm going around the perimeter offices to my little freaking cubby hole to work. And, um, <laughs> you know, you, you'd run into one of the partners in the aisles and they're not even looking in the eye, they're just kind of looking down. And, and I remember this, to this day, this would be like 35 years later, the feeling. I'm like, okay, you know, Mr. So and so, sure, you may not care enough to know anything about me, but can you at least remember my name? <laughs> it's just more than me. That's all I'm going to take, right? So um, you're right, yeah, just those simple acts can do um, uh, a lot of uh, good. And you know, there's a book uh, called The Five Love Languages, and it's about relationships. And um, uh, it basically talks about how there's five different ways to speak to someone. And your job uh, is to find out what are the top one or two ways to speak to someone. It could be your spouse, uh, girlfriend, or friend, or your friend, or whatever, right? Like, I know my wife. Her two love languages are words of appreciation and affirmation, right? Like, mm-hmm. they're, uh, you know, like that stuff. And uh, another one is time, right? So she, one of them, the, the language is material stuff, and that's like not even on a list. It's not even in her top five. But if I say, let's go for a walk, she's all over that, right? Um, and so I think for a lot of people, that time one is an important one, right? And so when you show you care, right? Um, I mentor a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, startups, uh, students, and um, often, you know, the, the person I'm meeting for the first time will sit down with me and they'll just start diving into their issue. I'm like, well, hang on, but we just met. I don't even know you. <laughs> uh, I go, I've got a three-step process, three-part process, and, you know, it, this is what works for me. But I go, well, the first thing is, you know, please tell me about yourself. You know, like, I like to start at the beginning. <laughs> Where were you born? What did you study? What kind of environment did you grow up in? What kind of job did your parents have? You know, siblings. Um, step two is, um, you know, where are you now? You know, so why did you start your company and, and where are you at? That kind of stuff. And then step three is, tell me where you're trying to get to. And with that foundation of one and two, um, I'm best prepared and best able to try and help you on your journey with a piece of advice, guidance, or contact, right? And I find that, you know, these people like me, especially young students, just totally appreciate it. They're like, oh my God, like no one ever asked me that kind of stuff. Cause they just kind of feel like, you know, you're like, you got this limited time, I gotta spit you out and move on, right? Um, but yeah, so it's uh, again really showing how much you care. Yeah. Praveen, I know from this conversation already that you're great with people. And I also know that you spent five years at KPMG before you went on to staking land in Northern Canada and eventually striking diamonds and partnering with De Beers, which is one of the largest companies, diamond companies in the entire world. I'm wondering, like, people who go to KPMG don't normally do that. How did you find... <laughs> so how, how were you able to achieve that um, level of success? Would you credit to your people person skills it, that and uh, a, a few other things too so um you know i guess it 
comes back to that whole idea of building relationships and investing time in, in doing so and, and in someone. And um, I tend to approach life from the mindset of abundance versus scarcity, right? And mm-hmm. to be of service and to be a connector, right? And, um, you know, you, you might start hearing once in a while that, oh, you're, you got to get better at saying no to things, right? And be sort of more closed on your time, whatever, right? But I approach life from, you know, I like to say yes to more things than I say no. Like, I'll say yes until there's a reason to say no, right? So that hmm. open-mindedness, you know, one leads to opportunities and, and, and luck. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I've worked in so many different sectors, um, you know, gaming and, and solar and, and food and blockchain and different areas of mining and, you know, people like, say, well, how, how, you know, you're a CPA, you're a FCPA, you're a reservoir, like, how do you make money in so many different industries? And um, um, for me, it's all about also building teams. So you two must have played team sports growing up, right? I play a lot of team sports. And to me, business is all about teams. And um, so, uh, you know, you're trying to connect people and bring them into the opportunity and, and sell a vision and opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting how it's all kind of come together. And the other thing is, um, using integrity, I like to talk about this a lot, to build a personal brand, right? Because just like companies have brand, we have brand. And the sooner you can realize that, you know, you have the brand and how you can influence it positively or negatively, you know, uh, the better, right? And so I found integrity was that key, you know, personal value that really helped me to have business success that led to some financial freedom, that led to time freedom, to do things that I want to do versus I have to do, right? And um, I actually helped write a few books. Um, you know, one's called uh, Life Manual, and the other one is called Be Great. Uh, they're both written by a friend like Peter Thomas, who's like a real estate entrepreneur. Uh, but there's a chapter mm-hmm. where I talk in more detail about this. But basically, the short version is, um, to me, there's two types of integrity. So one is that internal integrity, like being true to yourself and your values. Uh, the old, how do you act when nobody's watching? Right, so if I tell you know my kids when they're young, you shouldn't litter. If I'm in the forest, like I shouldn't litter, right? So that's internal integrity. Um, and the second one is um, an external integrity, which is saying what you mean and doing what you said you're going to do, right? So basically, it's it's keeping your promises. But even better, it's something that I uh, pronounce UPOD, UPOD, which is an acronym for under promise and over deliver, as opposed to OPOD which is overpromise and underdeliver, which unfortunately is mm-hmm. human nature because a lot of people end up, you know, saying something that they um, uh, are, are saying to try to please someone and uh, they set themselves up for failure and, and disappointment, right? So if you can properly set and manage expectations, you can you pod. And what happens is if you develop this reputation as a crusher, um, it leads to opportunities, right? So, you know, it's like going back to the sports analogy when you're on the, you know, the school field and they're picking teams for soccer, second captain, first pick, right? So uh, I found that's been something that's really been important for me is just, you know, like if I put my name on something, I'm going to crush it. And when you get that reputation, you know, there's just so many different opportunities come to you and um, kind of leads to. Hmm. I'm also interested, you spoke there about integrity being something key that you look for. And since you work with so many different entrepreneurs, you must have a certain profile of entrepreneur you look for um, just when you're looking to to invest or to work with or to hear their story. And something me and Brandon, we were crushing about is, I wonder what type of story you look for in people. Yeah, so um, do you guys play poker? I've played once, I, uh, not I in the did. casino, but uh, we're friends on the side. <laughs> no, there's a poker table stake, right? So to me, it's table stakes when an entrepreneur comes in, they're going to be hardworking, you know, smart, driven, all those kind of things, right? But kind of the X factors we look for are vision and passion, right? Because that's mm-hmm. what gets someone excited to want to buy into their, you know, the dream and to help, you know, collectively turn it to reality, right? So, you know, you're selling me and, and um, I get excited. Now I'm going to want to, you know, be part of that. Um, so... Uh, and then we're primarily impact focused. So, you know, I kind of mentioned casinos and gaming. I was in my twenties, about one o'clock forward, 
we just made impact investing a focus. So we're quite well known as sort of a go-to shop for impact entrepreneurs. And no disrespect to people that work in some of these industries that don't get our value. Um, it's just, yeah, like if you can be good and make money, that's what we try and do. So um, your why of your business is super important as well. You just mentioned the why of your business, but I'm certain that someone's why is also important. And I want to take this second because this podcast was originally inspired by a podcast that I love called The Diary of a CEO. And he made this new tool, which is the conversation cards. And he asked guests at the end of his podcast, leave a question for the next one. Right. And he like wrote them on these cards. And I was going through the cards and I was wondering what question can I pick from here to ask you? <laughs> and it's just so happens that the question is, why do you exist? And yeah. so I'm wondering what's your why? Totally. No, it's, it's, a, it's a, a very important question, right? And um, so my why is, um, I guess I'm trying to impact as many different lives as I can, whether it's through business or a lot of the charity philanthropy work I do or, you know, the community work and things. And, um, you know, that whole sort of reverse engineering to your tombstone, right? So, you know, when I die, you know, is anybody really going to care? Is anybody going to show up at the service for the day of life, right? <laughs> Um, mm. Even when you're alive, you know, one of the things we talk about is and if you do a lot of these things we're talking about correctly and, and well, how do people talk about you when you're not in the room, right? And um, so it's kind of neat now because I've been in business for, you know, 30 plus years since I left KPMG. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm constantly running to people who are like, hey, I've never met you, but, you know, so-and-so told me about you or, you know, actually just last week. <laughs> This is uh, a friend of mine I haven't seen in a long time. It was Kareen. I must have heard her name five times last week. <laughs> so we got to get there. Right? But yeah, I, I found um, uh, also having kids, you know, became really important. So we've got a daughter, Jay, our son, and niece. And just to be a role model for them to um, mm. model the behavior that you want them to emulate and, um, and then kind of wind them up and unleash them so they can kind of, you know, create their own legacies, but they become part of your legacy, right? So, um, uh, and then I find uh, I'm actually driven to make a lot of money. I used to think, okay, I wasn't so focused on money, but then, you know, you realize, well, one, money is a nice tool, right, to do lots of things. And one is, I, I think of four different buckets. So one is the life and lifestyle bucket, right? So if it's plentiful and overflowing, well, then you can, you know, go on great trips and order, you know, food at restaurants without looking at the price. I mean, you do look at it, but the point is you can order wherever you want. Um, you could do a lot of charity philanthropy. So that's really what uh, drives me is I'm trying to make more, so I give away more. Um, and then a third bucket is, I call it my angel investing bucket. Um, so I'm trying to feed entrepreneurs and get them going. So then hopefully they could become successful and have some financial freedom and some time freedom. So now they can go fund another entrepreneur or fund a charity. And then uh, the last bucket, I call it my random act of kindness bucket where you know, you could just do fun, you know, stuff with it, right? And um, so, you know, money to me is kind of as a tool or energy and it's got to flow. You can't damn it and hoard it. You know, you got to let it, you know, go through these different buckets of overflow and you got to make it the right way, you know, uh, ethically and, and you know, responsibly and hopefully impact, right? So my why is to, you know, keep working as long as I can to impact, you know, as many you know, companies, um, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, charities, the plan as I can and use the fruits of it to just do more. <laughs> yeah. Praveen, so you seem to give away a lot and I'm wondering, do you typically see that the people that give the most receive the most in return? Um, I, I, I truly think so because, you know, you, you're creating karma and good energy and that leads to more opportunities, right? Um, and you know, this is going back, but I remember when I was kind of your age, like I'm thinking business dude, that every billionaire on the planet is my hero. And then you get older and wiser, and you're like, well, shit, you know, some, you know, all these billionaires, you know, have had multiple wives and they, you know, kind of, you know, rake the pillars their way, you know, like, you know, to, to get to the top or whatever the hell it is. Right. And then, so you realize, well, you know, someone who, like my father, I mean, he's done well, but you know, more importantly. You know, he's uh, raised a great family, he's a pillar in the community. And, and so, um, 
you know, those are sort of my you know, heroes. Um, but I think, yeah, you, you, you have a, a, a rich life when you have lots of other things going for you, like your health is obviously really important too. Um, and we come back to relationships, right? There's actually studies that show most of your life's happiness comes out of relationships. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I'm writing my own book. Uh, the title is, Do You Want an Ordinary Life or an Extraordinary Life? Um, and it's more of a manual, life manual for kids and you know the, um, other relatives, let's say it's not the college that make money. And basically, I break it down into sections. And a lot of my own material is in there. And I take the best of other stuff I've learned, right? But the first section is about relationships. Um, and so, you know, and then with robots and AI, like, I mean, just crazy what's going now, right? But um, as we've told our two kids, the interpersonal stuff is not going away, right? And so you almost need to double down now on that mm -hmm. stuff because of all the other stuff that's happening. Right. You said your book title is... Part of it is how to have an extraordinary life. And what I'm wondering is, how do you have an extraordinary relationships? Because I know I've been in a few romantic relationships, but just even in terms of friends, and you, um, you know, sometimes it is hard to to figure out. I, I think I've I've struggled at, at, at times to maintain certain relationships in search of of growth. And I think I've had issues in just sticking to something long enough and putting in effort when nothing is given back to me. Mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if you could like give them a quick manual or rundown of how to have or maintain great relationships. Yeah, well, they're all work. <laughs> like even, mm -hmm. you know, like, like I've been married 30 years, but you know, you're going to have your peaks and valleys and ups and downs. And, and so, um, you know, the, the other analogy I've heard and it's, more, it's, like, it's like a garden, you have to tend to it. You can't let the weeds overgrow it, right? So, um, and the other, Thing I learned from a, another friend uh, relationship that was going through a bit of a rocky period. But basically, you know, he said, look, I was in this situation where I didn't feel like I was, you know, like moving towards, you know, my partner. And yeah. so it's, it's like that growth mindset. Like if you're not growing, that means you're probably flatlining, which means you're going to probably go down the other way, right? And so, you know, in every relationship, if you're not moving towards a person, right, um, on a continual basis, then, you know, the, going to create some problems and then it could be sort of a wedge that kind of breaks you apart right so you always have to work at it and move towards them right um so I, i'm guilty of it and so i try and you know um uh with my wife sometimes like i'll be at my computer like this working and she'll come in and, and she's trying to talk to me and i'm not even like looking at her right so i gotta put my pen down look her in the face and you know i like eye contact so a lot of simple things quite frankly that all can you know add up um Negative if you're not doing it, positive if you are doing right. But um, uh, and then we're talking about five love languages. Go get that book <laughs> and okay. uh, figure out you know what's one of the two ways that whatever relationship you're talking about, uh, you know, um, you can utilize those tips in that. <laughs> the listening is, is definitely one. I've started meditating recently and just focusing on something, and it's astonishing how that has impacted my relationships and just being able to listen to someone. And it's crazy to think how much of it is missing in our society today and how someone's yeah. talking, you just think of another thought at the same time and you've like completely lost track of it. So yeah, um, yeah, we definitely need to be better listeners, I think, nowadays. Yeah, no, totally agree. Yeah, and Praveen, as we're nearing the end of the podcast, we have a tradition where we would ask uh -huh. the previous guest for a quote and then share it with the current guest. and. Uh, we'll like your thoughts on it. So the previous guest okay. was a founder of an incubation program in the beauty industry. And his quote was, hmm. be comfortable being uncomfortable. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I, that, that's a great one because that's often where the biggest growth is, right? Um, so, you know, I, I do a lot of public speaking and a lot of people are scared of public speaking, right? And um, and so I don't think I've ever turned down an opportunity to not public speak, right? And, and, um, um, and then it kind of goes back to the luck thing too, right? Because you never know who's in the audience, who's going to hear it, what opportunity they come out of it, right? But um, um, yeah, it's a, it's a muscle and you have to exercise it and use it, but um, uh, you know, taking chances on, on things. 
that you've never done before or tried is also how you have a, a rich life. <laughs> Thank you right. so much for coming on, Praveen. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this episode. As a growing channel, it would be so amazing if you would take one more minute of your day to reshare this episode on any platform you're liking. Hope to see you next week.